Hello, my name is Eleonora Ferrucci and I'm a modeling application engineer here at Nexperia. Today we will talk about accurate modeling of power MOSFETs to rapid prototyping power electronic design in automotive applications. Validating circuit designs when using power MOSFETs can be challenging and one of the critical topics is designing for optimum EMC performances. In order to predict correctly the switching and EMC behavior of the device, it is critical to model accurately the dynamic characteristics of the MOSFET. Here at Nexperia, we developed a new electrothermal MOSFET model able to represent very accurately both statics and dynamic characteristics of the device. This is a powerful tool that enables design engineers to get early validation of their designs in preliminary stages of their projects. We will now consider an industry standard method to characterize the switching behavior of power semiconductors. We refer to that as double pulse testing and is specifically intended to test device performance in inductive clamp switching applications. It consists of an half bridge configuration with an inductive load. We have a low side MOSFET used as a switch and a high side MOSFET used as a freewheeling diode. And we give a train of two pulses to the gate of the low side MOSFET. Hence why we call it double pulse testing. When we give the first pulse, we turn on the low side MOSFET and you get current flowing through the inductor, charging the inductor. And then when the gate signal gets to zero again, this MOSFET turns off and the current in the inductor will flow through the high side freewheeling body diode. What happens during these events is that you will accumulate some charge in the PN junction of the high side body diode and that charge is referred as reverse recovery charge or QRR charge. When we give the second pulse, we will switch on again the low side MOSFET. And what happens is that you get current through it, but you also have to remove the charge at you previously stored in the PN junction. So you have to remove the QRR charge. And this will cause for a very brief period of time, a high speed signal flowing, which is the reverse recovery signal, which will interact with the parasitics of the PCB board and with the parasitics of the MOSFET and will have an impact on the electromagnetic emission of your circuit because it may cause voltage and current overshooting in your circuit. When we model the devices, what we look at is the second turn on of this low side device because it's when we can assess the reverse recovery behavior of the high side MOSFET and we can model the QRR area of the current. For modeling, the switching behavior of the device and to guarantee an accurate behavior of the EMC performance of the device, we want to model accurate the reverse recovery behavior of the body diode. To do this, we look at the current through the MOSFET and at the high side VDS. And that's the two signals that we want to model more accurately and make sure we capture the frequency of the oscillations and the damping of the oscillation and the QRR area of the current. We will now carry out a double pulse measurement on one of our automotive grade power MOSFETs and channel power MOSFET BUK 7S 1R5 40H. It's a 40 volt rated part with maximum state resistance of 1.5 million in LF pack 88 package. Here you have the board to carry out the double pulse measurement. As we saw in the schematic before, we have an off bridge configuration of devices, a low side 
device and a high side device, a gate driver, and an external inductive load of four micro Henry. We will now carry out a double pulse measurement on this gear. We will set the software on running and then we will name our file test1 and then we will switch on the gate signal and we will set the VDS supply. We will set it to 20 volt as we normally test it at half of the BVDSS rating of the part, which is 40 volt. And then here we will set the number of recordings we want to take, which is five, for example. And here we will set the current we want to switch at. In this case, it's 25 amps. So here you can see the number of recordings being taken and the number of triggering increasing. And every time a measurement is acceptable, this number goes up and will stop when it's equal to five, which is the number we decided to be. Okay, we can now look at the final results. What we are looking at in this graph is the turn on event, which as we said before, is what we are more interested in when we talk about EMC modeling of our devices. So if we zoom in a bit, we can distinguish better the waveforms. Here, the green waveform is the low side VDS. The red waveform is the current. The orange waveform is the high side VDS. The blue is the diesel link. The yellow is the gate waveform. And the purple waveform is the turn on switching energy. What we said we were caring about in this kind of measurement for modeling the switching behavior and the EMC behavior of the device is actually the current waveform along with the high side VDS waveform. And what we will try to do is modeling as accurate as possible the damping of this oscillation and the frequency of the oscillation of both VDS high side and the current waveform. And specifically, we want to model as accurate as possible the QRR area, which is this triangular area above this 25 steady state level of the current. We will now perform a simulation of this exact same measurement using a model for the device we have there. So we will use an electrothermal MOSFET model for the BUK7S105-40H and check if the simulated results are co correlated to the measured results. We will now replicate the double pulse measurement in a simulation environment. We are using PartQuest Explore, which is a cloud-based simulation tool developed by Siemens. Here, in this schematic, you can recognize the half bridge configuration, the low side MOSFET and the high side MOSFET, the gate signal, the inductive load of four micro Henry and the resistance to sense the current. What we can now do is simulating this design and probe the signals that we just looked at in the measurements. Therefore, it will be the high side VDS of this MOSFET and the current through the MOSFET. So we can probe here the high side VDS. Make it a bit bigger. 
and similarly we probe the current. And we make it bigger. As we saw in the double pulse measurement, we are interested in the second turn on event, which is this bit. Here we can see the high side BDS waveform oscillating, as in the measurement is something around 36 volts. And here we can see the current waveform. And again, we are looking mainly at the frequency of the oscillation, the damping of the oscillation and the QRR area. Again, we have a very good match between the measurement and the simulated data. We will now look more closely at numbers and parameters to evaluate what is the error between measurement and simulation. Here we have the measured data plotted against the simulated data to appreciate how accurate the model is compared to measurement. On the left side we have the current waveforms and on the right side we have the VDS waveforms. What we want to focus on is the QRR area for the current, so the triangular area above the 25 steady state level. And for the VDS, we want to guarantee that the frequency and the damping of the oscillation is accurate as much as possible. If we look at numbers, the peak current has just a 0.6 percentage error between measurement and simulation. And similarly, the base of the QR area, which is TRR, the reverse recovery time, has an error just about 0.9% between measurement and simulation. If we go on the high side VDS waveform and we look at what are the errors on the first three peaks, we have less than 3.5% error on the first peak less than three on the second peak and less than 2% on the third peak. In both waveform, the frequency of the oscillation is very well matched as, long, as well as the uh, damping of this oscillation, which means the model is representing accurately the device performance in simulation compared to measured data. We just demonstrated that the new Nexperia electrothermal MOSFET model is capable to reproduce accurately the device performance in simulation in application-like testing, being a powerful tool for engineering, providing early and upfront validation for Nexperia MOSFET products. The new Nexperia electrothermal MOSFET models will be available for the full T9 portfolio on Nexperia.com.